Well, you done did it, Vegas. You traded Marc-Andre Fleury, a Vesna-winning goaltender and NHL legend, for what is now literally nothing. Yeah, that's right, nothing. You traded him for nothing. Ah, uh, what do you mean, Lego? They traded him for cap space, I know that. Technically, the Vegas Golden Knights accomplished what they wanted to do by trading Marc-Andre Fleury, as we noted, an NHL legend, for cap space. But the manner in which that trade was executed, where he found out via Twitter and they traded him to Chicago pretty much for a prospect that wasn't really moving the needle all too much, I said in the video initially back when the trade was made that the move was somewhat disrespectful. It was shameful for the Vegas Golden Knights based off of how they treated a guy that carried their franchise in the face of the media into the new environment that they were establishing themselves within. Fleury was the face of the Golden Knights from day one, and the way you go out there, you trade this guy away, you don't let him know about it, you make him find out via Twitter, it's just so bad, in my opinion, and now you take a look at how things have gone down since then. What exactly did the Golden Knights receive? Well, they received, in exchange for Marc-Andre Fleury, prospect Mikhail Hukarainen. He was drafted in 2018 as a double overager by the Blackhawks in the fifth round. And ever since those days, I mean, he was okay in the Muskegon system, obviously being a point per game is great, but... When you are a double overager, it is a little bit fishy going out there and trying to project this kind of profile long term. Hakurina went over to Providence in the NCAA. He signed over and played in the AHL with the Rockford Icehawks, was pointless in those eight games, went over to the ECHL, so literally a third tier division player where he was over a point per game for the Indy Fuel, but come on, it's the ECHL. In this most previous season, though, Mikhail Hakurainen split even more time with Rockford and Indy, had zero points in the AHL, one point in six games in the ECHL, and heading into 2021-2022, as a guy who is already 23 years old, is there really a projectability into the NHL for this kind of player? I don't know about you, but taking a look at the numbers here, I wouldn't really say so. Sure, he was great in Muskegon, but... That's a junior league. He was a 20, 21 year old. It was not really the same. But now, take a look at what the Golden Knights have done. They have done what exactly it is you would probably do with this kind of prospect who is not really panning out. He's not really doing all too well in the ECHL nor the AHL. They've placed him on unconditional waivers for the purpose of mutual contract termination. He had one more year remaining on his three-year ELC, which was signed in May of 2019. So, what exactly does this mean? It means that the Vegas Golden Knights took Marc-Andre Fleury, a franchise goaltender. I'm going to call him a franchise goaltender. I mean, he's won the cup three times. He has made the cup final five times. He has won a Vezina trophy for the first time in his career. He's won an Olympic gold medal. He's a several-time all-star. He is still really good. You trade this guy away for a guy that you eventually send away for nothing on waivers. All because he's got a $7 million cap hit for next year. Wow. My goodness, that's just so... Ah, uh, man, it really does feel kind of fishy to me, you know? Mostly because it's like, yeah, I know, I get it. You have to go out there, you have to do things to preserve the ability of money spending on your hockey team. You have to go out there and work with the financials. It's important to do that. It's just, you know, as I said in the first video, it's a respect thing. This is a guy who's an NHL legend. He's a Hall of Fame player, and you treat him like this. You trade him away for nothing. He doesn't find out about the trade until he goes onto Twitter. And now what? It's not even like he was playing poorly when he got traded either. This is not one of those, oh, he's an old aging vet who's really on the last straw right here, who is just so bad it's not really worth holding on to him anymore because he's washed up and old. That's not the case here. He was literally a Vesna winner. He was the best goalie in the league, based off of the trophy voting. I mean, he wasn't on the first All-Star team, though, which is kind of strange. Kind of funny, actually, how a guy who was on the second All-Star team can win the Vesna for being the best goaltender in the league. I guess that goes to show you how the voting processes differ from various awards in the National Hockey League. But still, second All-Star team, Vesna winner, Stanley Cup finalist a few years ago, 
and actually multi-time Stanley Cup finalist, three straight time Stanley Cup finalist, now that I think about it. Yeah, that is a big, big resume, and a guy that was just doing this stuff literally as recently as this season. So the manner in which he was traded and the return the Golden Knights received, as well as what they did with that return, uh, it's just so bad, man. It's really bad. And that's no disrespect to Mikhail Hakurainen either. He's just kind of the body here that was involved in the trade. I know a lot of people are going to go out there and say, oh, why didn't they just trade Fleury for future considerations? Or they traded him for a seventh round pick or whatever, if they were just going to go out there and get rid of the guy they acquired from Chicago in general. The argument that I saw from a lot of people was, oh, maybe the Blackhawks would want to go out there and not use up an extra roster spot because you have a limited 50 amount of contracts that you're allowed to have under your payroll. And that makes sense, you know? Okay, we're gonna have to get rid of a guy when we're getting Flurry back so we don't destabilize our contract numbers, but that doesn't make any sense. The Blackhawks right now, they have everybody signed that they need to get signed, and they're at 45 contracts. Are you serious? You could have kept this Hakurainen guy and sent away a draft pick instead. Maybe the Blackhawks go full troll and they sign Hakurainen after he becomes a free agent in unconditional free agency. Maybe they just claim him on waivers again. Really rub it in the face of the Golden Knights saying, ha, we got your guy. And the Golden Knights will be like, I don't care. We've got cap space, which is kind of what we need right now. So much to the point that we will prioritize this over the positive relationship that we have with a guy that has literally been the face of our franchise since we were born. Oh, man. I kind of get a little bit more ticked off the more I think about this Marc-Andre Fleury thing, I'm not going to lie. I just kind of hope that every time the Blackhawks play the Golden Knights this season, Fleury shuts them out. Mostly just to stick it to the Golden Knights, you know? Maybe we could see one of those situations where it's the end of the season, and the Vegas Golden Knights are two points out of a playoff spot. They need to win this final game to make it into the dance. And they're playing Chicago. They go over to T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Flurry shuts the door in a 1-0 regulation win with the game-winning goal coming off the stick of Caleb Jones from Seth Jones with two minutes left in the third period. That sounds like an absolute Cinderella story that I would love to hear. But, you know, that's just kind of my GM mode, franchise mode kind of mind going about it. But either way, though... Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Marc-Andre Fleury's trade return and Mikhail Hakarainen being placed onto unconditional waivers for the purpose of contract termination? This to me is just, well, I mean, I don't really need to explain, don't I? I just spent eight minutes explaining. Talk to me in the comments what you think I'll be enjoyed. This was Rashwell's 99. And bye. <laughs>